conference on the future of Europe as an opportunity to create a genuine dialogue between citizens and institutions on our common future and the big challenge of our time. It is more than a simple exercise from the bottom up in the political uh, process, but a necessary because the world of the 21st century is much more different and obliges us to adapt to the new realities. Expectations for the EU are much higher and the solutions to global issues are much more complex. All the crises so far, including the recent COVID crisis, have shown two main things. The need for political unity and the need for quick solutions. This inevitably raises the frontal question. Can the EU be more united and faster in decision making, understand more effective in the current uh, legal framework given the, the, given the treaties? And the definite answer is no, it cannot. To a large extent, the Conference on the Future of Europe will try to lay the foundations for such a conversation. It will expand uh, the scope of citizens' involvement in politics and this will strengthen the representative democracy. And because it will be a conversation on the future, we cannot exclude the Western Balkans. There is no doubt they belong to Europe and their future is linked to the European Union. We have to use this occasion to critically assess the EU's enlargement in the region, especially following the failure to start the EU accession talks with North Macedonia and Albania. Modern digital democracy offers enormous opportunities for such, a, for such type of inclusive citizen participation from Western Balkan countries. We should help organize and coordinate a network of Balkan organizations who are tasked by their governments to follow and produce input for the conference. The European Liberal Forum should also support our members in the Balkans to organize citizens' events in the region, alongside those held in member states, because as countries aspiring for accession, the future of Europe is also theirs.